All right, legends, welcome back to the Rugby League Guru Podcast. We have got something very special for you today, something that I've been looking forward to for quite some time. As you know, Kat's joined the team over the last few weeks, and when I first met Kat years ago, I knew that I wanted to have her involved in Guru because we just vibed on the same level. She just she knew what I was thinking, knew what I wanted all the time. And this is someone else that from the moment I saw his content, I just knew I've got to have him involved somehow um if you go to instagram uh the messenger rl go and have a look i absolutely love the content that tom produces i'll introduce him in a moment but when it comes to rugby league content creators i genuinely do believe he is the most underrated by far and away i'm actually a little bit filthy myself for having him on today because i kind of want to keep him all to myself i'm not going to lie uh but he does deserve so much more tom welcome on mate Happy Rugby League to you and you and your family <laughs> and all you hard-working Aussies out there by blue and white collar. How are we going, Guru? I'm going well, mate. You uh, you sent me a text today when you arrived. You said, mate, I'm in the car park, not sure where the entrance is. Yeah. I said, yeah, yeah, I'll come find you. Sweet. And I walk around the corner. I thought, oh, I've never actually met Tom in real life. How am I going to know what he looks like? And then I saw one of the greatest kangaroo jerseys I have ever it's seen. Sick, I thought, I reckon that's probably him. Yeah. I reckon I'm probably safe as houses walking up to this dude. Tell us, where'd you get that one from, for starters? Uh, it's a hand-me-down, so uh, it's from my uncle. Yeah. Um, so he bought it in 1990. Him and his brother were going to the United States, and they were yeah. there for about two or three months. And so he bought an Australian jersey, and my other uncle, Brian, he bought a Roosters jersey, even though he goes to Canterbury because he wanted to say he was from the eastern suburbs. <laughs> Um, and so they went around the state. So this jersey's been to Soldier Field in Chicago and um, I came into possession to it a couple of years ago and I love it. It's my favourite shirt. You just – you can't buy greens like that anymore. It's – like the fabric is so yeah. fucking sick on it. Sorry, can – No, swear we can away. Go Please do. No worries. This is rugby league. Uh, well, uh, right. That's what we're here for. Know. Let's go. Fire up. <laughs> now, uh, mate, uh, now as some of you would have seen, obviously, and we're about to launch the set over the next few weeks, so you'll see a lot more of them and throughout the year and into the future as well. But I've had some guru designs made by Tom that are based on grand finals. So we're actually going to go through each of those today and talk about – the special little features in all those because, sure. mate, there's there's little – and this is, what I, this is what I've always loved about Tom when I looked at his content I said to him, hey, mate, I've got an idea that looks kind of like this and I've got a broad idea in my head and you – it's almost like you've plucked it out of my melon and just times it by 10. This design here, the logo that we've got here, Tom did these for us as well and I remember, mate, I came to you with like – just the most airy fairy. I want a 1990s. I want a bit of a Winfield theme. And you just went, shut up, let me do it. And you came back to me within days and I went, oh my God, I absolutely love it. Perfection. You know, you know why? It's because something that it's, we've both lived it. Yeah. We both know what it looks like. So when you say that, I know exactly what you mean. And I can just like, I know the reference. I know the time. I know what that graphic design looks like. And it's like, I cherish it just as much as you do. So yeah, it, it, it might sound like what you're saying is hard, but I find it such a fundamental, easy thing because we both love the thing, right? Yeah, and that's the and I, I you know, just from talking to you today, you, you've used this word, this these words a number of times. The Venn diagram of there's a lot of really good designers on social media yeah. that are fantastic, that do unbelievable work. It's cracking. Then there's a lot of people with great rugby league knowledge. You are right in the hey diddle diddle for me. Yeah. And what I love is that it's not your knowledge. And, you know, I, I haven't spoken to you all that much about rugby league at the end of the day. I'm sure, you know, stats and all that sort of stuff, you, you're probably well and truly across. But the little niche things in rugby league that make rugby league yeah. what it is, um, you, you're probably the, the person I've spoken to the most in my life that just seems to nail every down to the carpet of the RSL clubs to the, you know, and some of the, these designs, just the little things that you've picked up on that are just the most purest, dribbliest rugby league ever. And I love it. And I, I feel like people like us don't meet each other enough in life yeah. that appreciate this sort of shit. And, mate, I'm very lucky that I've slowly built a community that does appreciate that sort of stuff and – Mate, if people haven't seen your Instagram page, they're about to and their their lives are about to get turned upside down and I guarantee you they're about to lose three hours of their life Hope in the so. best way possible. So take us through the Instagram and everything. What's the handle? What's the story? Take us through all of it, mate. So the Instagram handle is the Messenger RL, um, And so that's a collaboration between me and my best friend, Tom Smith. Um, he was formerly a writer at Rugby League Week. Mm -hmm. I'm a high school visual arts teacher so with a graphic design sort of background. And we just love footy and 
we talked about this at, at a time when during COVID was hitting, we didn't, we had a lot more time on our hands um, and we just love sport. And we came to this sort of place where we want to do something with rugby league because that feels so fundamental to who we are. While we met at soccer, we love cricket. We can talk about lots of things. Rugby, rugby league feels fundamentally so special to us. It, yeah. It's our childhood. And we sort of see each other as rugby league people. And when you find somebody like that, um, it's sort of special that we've sort of shared this and we've built this sort of thing because it really is just a love letter to the sport and yep. what we sort of grown up with and why we love it. So, and what we're sort of talking about then, where you're talking about the niches, it is that Venn diagram where, you know what, I could talk about footy, but you know what, I'm not Phil Gould or Ricky mm. Stewart. So my opinion does or doesn't matter, just depending. Where I love hearing those blokes, but what I'm an expert in is what the game looks like or what I want it to look like. If that's Winfield Cup sort of graphic design or if that's the mid-2000s, if that's footy cards or stickers or sick jerseys, that's the things that we are sort of experts in because we've lived it, we've bought it, we love it. That's what we're about. Some of uh, some of your some of my favorite rants that you go on social media are around. There's a few. There's a few, and they're they're absolutely cracking. Whenever I see one, I strap myself in and I sit down for a few minutes and just take it all in. Whenever and you know, and I I do the same thing, but you know, sometimes <laughs> I go to post it on social media, and I'm like. Do people care about this shit or not? But then I read your stuff and I'm like, no, I care about this, so other people must. Right. When you share an image and, you know, it might be Parramatta versus the Bulldogs from 2000 and you will analyse down to the strips that both teams wore, the football that they used that day, the advertisements that are on the side, what the paint on the in goal was, all these little details that I constantly think I'm a freak for caring about this yeah. shit, no one else does. And then when you analyse it, I'm just like... I love this. This is this is what this game is about for me. People care what it looks like. Yep. We can talk about what the game is and stuff like that, but it also comes down to the aesthetics. And because we're both, so everybody's sort of a visual person, what it looks like really fundamentally matters. That's yeah. why I care a lot about jerseys because if it's a bad jersey, it just looks bad. St. George versus Brisbane in their classic jerseys looks amazing. Mm. If they're in dud jerseys with like V8 supercar sponsorships all over the top of it. <laughs> what are we doing here, guys? We're, yeah. we're losing the romance of what the sport is. So those are the things that I sort of love about it as well. And it, even like dumb brown cardigan sort of stuff where it's blokes wearing retro jerseys doing stuff at Magic Round. That is like, that's rugby league. You know what I mean? It's not just about 26 blokes running around on a paddock. It's the whole culture that is built around the sport and, it, and people using that as their identity. Culture is the key word, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that, that's, and that's what we're about. Yeah, and that, that's what I always felt like. There's there's rugby league fans and there's rugby league fans like us and the rugby league fans like us can meet each other for the first time and have conversations you don't have with anyone else and have total confidence that I, you're going to you get, get what I'm saying. Yeah, and it's that footy culture that is just – it's just priceless to it's me. It's going to games. I think it's fundamental going to games. If you're not going to games and experiencing it with friends or family – it's sort of fundamental, the sights and the sounds of it. It's going to pubs and it's going to good pubs. Yep. And what I mean by good pubs, it's when like your floor, your feet stick to the floor. That's <laughs> a good pub for watching football. You know what I mean? Yep. Maybe not a Maryvale, but Vic on the Park's pretty good. <laughs> or it's watching it just like it's Tuesday night, the missus is out, you've got pizza and it's almost like, yeah, I'm going to chuck on the 1998 prelim of the 04 grand final just for shits and giggles because I've had a, had a hard day at work or something like that. I love, mate, uh, you know, I've brought a lot of people into this studio and there's a lot of things to look at and everything and I think you're the first person that I've gone to say, oh, these seats are from the – and I knew straight away you knew exactly where these seats oh, were from, from the, the SFS. Stadium. That colour. Yeah, that colour is – and that's my childhood. I would pick that colour. If you took me to Bunnings and snuck it in there somewhere on the paint <laughs> wall, I'd be able to pick out SFS seat. How do you find the new footy stadium compared to the old? Only been there once. For me, mate – Rugby league, I, I find it because I'm so busy and everything. Like I've I've watched the vast majority of games at so home because, for example, if it's a Friday night game and I go to it, I miss the early game. Yeah, and I've got to catch up on it at some point. So I've only been there once. Um, I, I I know it's very easy to bag the new and everything. I actually really enjoyed it out there. Yeah, I really like the stadium. Only been there once, but I enjoyed it. What are your thoughts? I went to the two sort of opening games, so the two East South games. Yep. The round twenty six game and then week one of the finals. Yep. I really enjoyed it, especially the day game there. But 
I found it a little bit cold. It sort of feels like a FIFA ground, if that makes sense. Mm. I don't know. It feels a little bit generic where the other one was a bit more classic. It felt aligned to Sydney because you had that sort of sweeping grandstand that was white. So it feels like it's aligned to the Opera House architecturally. And the thing is, well, now we're getting real fucking niche right niche, now. Yep. Is that the original stadium and the new one was both designed by uh, Cox Architecture. But... The original one was very much designed as an egalitarian ground. Mm. It's for everybody. Even the corporate boxes are outside. Where this ground and even at the new Parramatta, it's got the corporate hospo in mind. Yep. And we might get, talk about the West Tigers and how that's, got, <laughs> that's going to kill what like art. Yeah. But those ideas of egalitarian, idea of architecture and art and design and rugby league, it's almost like that's what the sport's about. I'll tell you what I miss the most from the SFS, mate. Yeah. And I think you'll appreciate it's this. The concrete shit house, is that it? Or leaking toilets or? The thing that I miss, mate, is the walk up where the members are on your right. Yep. Just, just that walk and there was the, the arc statue. Up. The arc up. And like I go there now and like I, I was at NRL headquarters a few weeks ago and I just stood there and now it's just a Flat. wall of stairs. And I just sat there and just went, ah. Oh. You just took me back to the 1998 grand final. Yeah. I'm now seven years old and walking up that hill. Like, <laughs> Mate, coming up no, that you're hill. you're absolutely right. And even when, it, like, when I was a kid as well, I remember there was a period of time where it was Aussie Stadium. And yeah. You'd see the big Aussie up there. Um, you'd have the members on the right, the squash courts. Like I still remember being a kid and walking through there and going and watching Artie Beatson play squash. And just like he'd be 140 odd kilos playing squash, not moving and just dominate. I remember, I remember sitting there at the SFS – with my old man, he, he, he was at the gym and I was sitting there watching Artie Beatson play Anthony Minicello in 2003 in the game of squash. And Mini, probably the fittest human on planet Earth at that point potentially, Artie was just hitting him around the court laughing at him. Owning the tee, just yep. side to side. How yep. good. Yeah, as long as Artie got to serve and then he could t he could waddle three steps to stand in the middle, mm. he'd own you for the next for the entire set. It was it was it's it's a memory that I will never ever forget. Obviously Artie's passed now, but one of the all-time greats. And that, that, that walk up the SFS, that's, that, that was my childhood. That's no, what totally. I loved. It was a temple. Yeah, it was a temple. That's exactly what it was. Yeah. It's, yeah. And so to have these, mate, I've had these for about six years now and I've been oh, waiting wow. to, I had these before I started Guru and I've just been holding on to them going, these will come in handy at some point. And now I get to build my own little rugby league mecca slash well, temple. Uh, th that's the thing where the new ones, they're the flip up where here you could actually stand them and do some real damage with yep. these sort of thing. <laughs> you know, I'm sure can a couple of Canterbury fans have thrown them out and thrown them at Roosters supporters before. Uh, no doubt. Uh, and I'm sure they probably deserved it too. Now, Canterbury, you're yes. a Bulldogs man. Yes. I've got to tell you, I've been sitting here looking at you going, are we sure this isn't Drew Hutchinson? There's a bit of oh, a look really? like there, yeah. Forehead territory, what's going on? <laughs> I just think the, the hair, you know, just there's, there's a lot. I'm seeing a lot of Hutcho in you and I'm a huge, I don't know how you feel about Drew Hutchinson, but he's my super coach draft halfback right now. I've always loved Hutcho. I, I back him because I remember his sort of time at St. George. I think he kicked a golden point field goal. He was a gun back in the day. Yeah, yeah. and it's almost like he went to the Roosters and I can see why he was at the Roosters. Because he's just a good footy player. Yeah. He's a hard trainer. He works hard. And those sort of things based around it, it's a good character of a football player, first grader, where you're adaptable, you're a good trainer. Yeah. And that's what Cameron Serraldo has done a lot, where you're signing Hutcho, but you're also signing these other blokes like Kurt Mann and Curran, where where are they going to fit? I'm not sure. But guess what? They're, f they're first graders. And they train hard and they bring a character to the football team. And you know what else I like about those guys too? The, oh, using your words, where do they fit? I don't know. They don't know exactly where they fit. So they're still hungry and they're still fighting. And I think that, you know, the big running joke is Canterbury have signed all these utilities. I reckon in three years' time there will only be a handful of them left, but they'll be the guys that have put their hand up and it's, have earned a spot somewhere. It's also building a culture yep. as well. And that's something that's – you know, I, we don't need to get on a huge tangent of what's been wrong with Canterbury Bank since it's Des Hasler's left. But there has been just a culture where accepting of, well, if we're going to lose, okay, well, it's not the end of the world. Or w what's acceptable at training. Like, again, I'm not there. I'm not going to preview that. I'm not feel good. And I'm not going to judge that. But I'm just going to say you can see with that recruitment path that they have, have signed good, honest first graders. And it will figure it out because if you can set that tone in culture and training – that will then reflect through the rest of the footy team. They're signing blokes of character. It reminds yeah. me a lot of like 2009 dogs when we got guys like Mick Ennis, uh, uh, Stag, 
S, uh, Eastwood, Ben Hannett, where it's almost like we're just getting all these sort of clean skins who are go- good, honest first graders and they're going to just set us up. And it's not exactly the same, but it's the same plan. We're going to sign good people and good first graders and that's going to sort of have a trickle of effect through the rest of the um, first grade side. It's interesting hearing you say there, mate, that like to some extent there's become a culture of losing is almost okay at yeah. Canterbury. Which to me and the Canterbury I grew up with. It's hard. It's unbelievable. But you talk to some young kids that don't know any different. There's – Oh, that just shits it, me. Yeah, it, it shits me to no end. And, you know, we, we've got um, Blue Wealth Property or our major sponsor for our Supercoach show and uh, one of the guys that works here we work very close with is Andrew Mortimer who's the son of Turvey. Yeah. And just hearing him and, you know, obviously what he grew up in, being Turvey's old yeah. young bloke and seeing all that, just the, the, the spot that the club finds itself in now, like – Imagine if you would have suggested 10 years ago, five years ago, that it would be okay to lose at Canterbury. Oh, just not acceptable. Yeah, it's just, it's and, bizarre. And I don't want to sort of be a person who's shitting on the team and stuff like that because I understand where they are mm. and what they're trying to get to. But I just sort of get really res- reminiscent, uh, reminiscent and nostalgic for like we were the baddest team on turf. Yep. We were the Oakland Raiders. We were so bad. We were Willie Mason – Stan, O'Mealy standing over Bryce Gibbs, what's it, Mike Tyson at his what best, worst, and baddest, or something like that. Yeah, we were scary, and now it's we're not that. And I don't know. It's it's a Canterbury that's in flux. Where sometimes I struggle to re- recognize as well. I think the thing that worried me for a while was we were signing these quality players, guys like Matt Burden, and I feel like are we going to ruin Matt Burden? Not because Matt Burden is not a good football player but the culture and the setup around him. And also, are we? do we have the cattle to support mm. a young half learning his trade if your forward pack's getting belted week upon week? How is he going to learn and become better from that when he's just in a losing side all the time? Mm. It makes it hard for good players that you've signed. Like I felt when we signed Matt Burden, we've got the number one draft pick almost. He's the best exciting young half going around that we've seen in a while. And because he sort of rescinded and it's almost like we've forward pack that's getting beaded, club that's sort of going nowhere. Are we just going to burn this generational talent just because of what's going on at the football club? Yeah. And that, that, that was the big worry for me when you signed Birdo that, you know, you knew you had, as you said, the number one draft pick, the best, potentially yeah. the next best five eight in the game, but you never solved the halfback problem. Yeah. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping we're heading in a general direction. You needed direction. an old head. Like yep. a... Like I know I'm talking out of generation, but like a Brett Kamali, like yeah. a 34-year-old saying, I'm going to show you the ropes. Like um, the St. George halfback would have been fantastic to get him over where I think it just would have cleaned up everything up. Yeah, even like a Jamal Fogarty potentially. Just, a, another, a just an old first head. first gra- yes. grader, which is going to – this is how we do the trade. Yeah, yeah. Um, mate, you have over the last couple of months designed – <laughs> some unbelievable things for me and I I just – I and quite often me, me and Kat will be talking. Kat's here, by the way. Kat, how are you? Sorry, I didn't get to uh, Hi guys. bring you in. Good no, to have I've you. just been very engaged in what Tom's saying. I think I can't wait to kind of, for you to dive into what all of the posters mean and the graphics and like your thinking behind it because you're so articulate about where the Bulldogs are at right now. It's so clear that you've ridden the wave of, of emotion of – of seasons with this team and it's it's really quite captivating to listen to. I'm fucking excited. Yeah. I'll tell you that much for free. No, I really appreciate hearing that, Kat. Yeah. It's unreal. Now, the designs we've got, mate, uh, we've got nine all together. I would like you to tell me which is your favourite. So I went to Tom and I said, mate, I want designs for the studio. I want them to be based on key grand finals. I want them to feature, you know, it, essentially every team we possibly can and we've managed to tick all all those boxes. You guys will see more and more of them over the next few weeks. Some of you keen eyes have picked up on some of them from Instagram posts and whatnot. But, mate, if you had to pick one of these to kick off at, where would you start? I think the 2023. Mm. The reason for that is we did that by ourselves and then Mm. once you saw that, you sort of got on board and said, can we do almost a series of it? And I feel like this whole series doesn't happen without that one. And I feel I've made that one... Uh, grand final week and we really enjoyed doing this mm. where it was a collaboration between me and Tom. Tom does drawings um, so he's quite a good sort of cartoonist Yeah, and then he'll send me the drawing and then I'll then 
put that in an illustrator and I'll design it and stylize and do a bunch of stuff. So we've got the, the leering Penrith Panther over the old school Bronco, but there's a really interesting thing here going with scale. So the Panther is enormous and he's sort of leering over and where this comes from, this initial, this initial image comes from an American cartoonist, Jack Davis. Yep. So he did all this sort of NFL stuff during the 70s and 80s and 90s. And initially this drawing is a Cincinnati Bengals um, sort of tiger, yep. I suppose, leering over the rest of the NFL. And so we, I really like that image because, again, sort of a big cat, Penrith Panthers, and the whole idea is the Panthers are the Goliath here. That they, These two teams are not meeting on even footing that Penrith are the monolith. They're, the, they're going for three in a row where Brisbane are just the challenger. They are the next one up. And I really like that imagery, and that's why the, the Panther is so big. The Bronco is small. The Bronco is sort of puffing its chest out. It's snorting its nostrils, saying, "We're going to have a crack too." But it is the Panther saying, "Like, take us on, at, and we're going to fuck you up." I'll tell you what. When I look at that one, it's sort of a bit of a gateway drug for me. It's what got me hooked. Yeah, it was. I because because like the, the the design that you guys are seeing on screen here, it's got rugby league guru at the top twenty three. Like that wasn't on the original. It was grand final week or something along those lines. So that was initially taken from a nineteen seventy <clears throat> rugby league week. So yep. the, the exact sort of word mark and sort of played around, and then I've adapted it there. And then right at the bottom where it says Penrith Panthers, Brisbane Broncos, that sort of word mark is sort of taken from early 2000s big league yeah. with that sort of font and word mark where you've got the small font of the name and big of the actual uh, mascot. That makes me think like 03 Panthers. Yeah. That, that, that's, that's, and and the, the Brisbane Broncos, I, I, I would imagine that's exactly what it would have looked like in 2000 grand final week. Well, that was the thing. Then with the post when we initially did that, you slide over and we've done the big league like it's from the early 2000s, yeah, but love for that. the 23 grand final. Absolutely love that. Um, the Panthers jersey that you ch you've chosen is very much so the Sanyo Panthers yeah. to me. Uh, and well, I, I like love that jersey. Like, I suppose the, the new – isn't it a bit weird how Penrith have had a different jersey every grand final? Yeah, yeah. and I like – and I'm I'm talking off the dome here, but like the first one was it represented the ninety ninety one ninety that sort well, of. The, I think so. Uh, twenty twenty they had their normal one. Twenty twenty one they had the normal one. Twenty twenty two they had their early nineties classic. Yeah, the barcode, which I think is yeah, the their definitive yes. jersey that they had against Para. And then last year they had the 03 throwback as well. Which is wild because they're actually kind of running out of jerseys. They've been so successful now, they're running out of jerseys well, to throw back yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. So it'll be interesting to see. I, let's go back to Chocolate Shop Soldiers. Oh let's do my it. God, yeah. could you imagine? Holy, oh, that no. would be unreal. Kat, do you, do you know that reference when we say Chocolate Shop? You, you were this, go ahead. So initially Penrith wore brown and white. Mm. I'm not really sure why, but the whole idea of the chocolate soldiers that they would be playing out at Penrith in March, it'd be 40 degrees and you would melt. And that was the sort of the reference point there. And I think they ditched it um, in the late 80s, 89, 90, when Gould was there. I think and it was just as they got successful. Yeah, yeah. so they lost the uh, 90 grand final against yep. Canberra and they were wearing brown and white. And then the following year they had changed the, the red green, yellow, black with the barcodes. Yeah. Which is just like, well, that to me is, that should be the shirt. But I understand why they have that. It's yeah. a lot cleaner for sponsorship. But that 91 or the, the shirt that they wore against Parramatta for me is the best Penrith shirt. And if you go back through like the history of that period, as you said, in, did you say in 1990 they wore the brown one? Yep. You know, at the end of that season, there's a the, the 1990 Kangaroo Tour. And of course, Fitler goes. Brandy goes, MG goes. Yeah. Um, there was there was a, there was a number of Panthers that went on that and spent a lot of time with obviously the Canberra Raiders boys on that tour. And you hear them talk about just how much they learnt from that tour and how much oh, they that right? yeah, like because obviously Ricky Stewart was there, Laurie Daly, Mal Meninga, Bradley Clyde, like all of the all of the superstars of the Canberra Raiders were there. Then all these Penrith boys, Johnny Cartwright was on it as well, um, and a lot of them were as they call back then the emus of that tour. So they would yeah, play the on the Tuesday graders, yeah. night against Witness or, get, you know, whatever it and might be. And then get be. on it on the weekend. Get yeah. on it. But they said the entire time and Phil Gould had told them, just take note of what these guys are doing because yeah. if we're going to win a comp next year, we're going to have to beat them. And they took note. They came back, 91. Um, and, yeah, obviously history is what history is. Incredible stuff. And you got to – I always think, mate, 
I know you'll appreciate this. I always think that early 90s Panthers was such a strong, dominant team. And um, unfortunately, it probably was the death of Ben Alexander that sort of split that team and up. That, that's the thing. It's almost like the human tragedy of that thing. Football's football. Yeah, exactly. And that thing is something more important sort of affected the whole thing. And what, Brandy? Well, Brandy didn't leave, but he went later to the Warriors and stuff. But the thing is, the football club was never the same, was it? Well, mate, from from like obviously I wasn't living out there at the time, but you talk to people that were, and you know I've heard Brandy talk about it that like Penrith wasn't the same. I've because because of my job, I used to I worked at a Catholic school in the eastern suburbs, so we were really good at rugby league. I won't say which one, but we had Brandy come out do the the New South Wales sort of origin launch. Yep. But that's when they were doing the whole sort of road safety and stuff. And he came and talked to, about his brother um, to a bunch of year 10 boys and it was just like pin drop stuff. It just I hadn't fully heard the story until Brandon mm. was there in the room. And it's sort of, yeah, it's... It's, it's devastating, yeah. yeah. Like devastating in general, but the impact it had on the Penrith Panthers, that was 1992, I believe. Mm. Um, and, you know, obviously Brandy leaves, Phil and Freddie go to the Roosters, MG sort of lost his way for a little bit. Yeah. There, Western so Reds and stuff like that. Western Reds, Balmain, I think he even I – think, I think straight away he went up to um, you may, you, you, the your minor, is it? I think he went up and your played minor there. minor bunnies? Yeah, your minor bunnies, that's it. He, he ended up up there and was in a really bad way. Uh, so, yeah, it was – yeah, I always, I always look back on that 90s Panthers and sort of go, fuck, you know, what could have been up there? Yeah. But then with this, we see the other side where it's harking back to classic Broncos. Yeah. And it's like, let's get the let's get the team back together. Let's get the band back together. We get Is this a Broncos team on the precipice of another sort of dynasty or a golden run where we've got guys like uh, the 5'8", the fullback, the front row? It is got dynasty sort of vibes. Yep. My only sort of thing is, was their best chance last year? That's my worry. Yeah. That Herbie's gone, Flegler's gone. It's just the roster might not be as strong and Reynolds is just another year older. Yeah, that's the big one for me. Reynolds another year older. It's a yep. very – it's a tight window. Mate, the other thing that stands out for me and when I look at this clip and, you know, I don't know if anyone else will think this but I'm sure you'll appreciate it. The background – that eggshell sort of white. Yeah. It's just that is rugby league weak. That is team list for me. That's the fur. And uh, as I said, once again, I'll give you the example. If you took me to Bunnings and you lined me up a thousand whites, I'd be able to pick that out yeah. and go, that's the team list color. It's a romantic sort yes. of color. Um, it's it's warm. So there is yeah. a sense of like it is full of nostalgia. It's rose-tinted sort of um, vibes to that. Uh I'm just trying to think of anything else. The spikes of the boots. It was almost like we are going to walk over you. We are going to put you in the dirt. And that's also because we were talking about what Penrith were doing, where 2020, they obviously lost to Melbourne. 2021 was sort of like a struggle against us. They got there. They might not have played their best football, but they won. But then 2022, they were like, we're the real deal here. Yeah. And now 20, 2023, it was all about like, this is we are crowning our achievement. Look how fearsome we are. We are we are it. We're the hottest shit going on, and you should be terrified of us. Yeah, not only are we the hottest shit, we know we're the hottest exactly. shit. Exactly. Yeah. It's the confidence of it. And that's what we're trying to communicate. That that was Penrith not only leering over the Broncos, but the rest of the competition. Yeah, you know what else I love about it is that you know, I would describe it as uh, as an arrogance the Penrith Panthers have, an arrogance that I love though, because yeah. they know how good they are which is what the Broncos were in the 90s and, and 2000s. And that's exactly what we're trying to communicate. Yeah. That's why the Penrith is so big there. When, if do you want to sort of, we could segue to 02 if you want. Go ahead. Where the whole idea is like 23, Penrith is so big there. We're 02 here. We're seeing two teams who are see, sort of equals that haven't been to, well, East had been to a grand final two years earlier. Yep. Were they the finished piece? They were sort of meeting as equals. We're 23. There was no way that we could ever sort of see Penrith and Broncos were equals on that field that night. Now, the 0-2. Oh, this burns me. Yeah, I was, I was, you know, that was going to be what I was going to kick off with. Obviously, the 0-2 grand final. was there as well because we were, we were going every year because Dad would buy grand final tickets in June, July because, you know, the yeah. dogs are good. Yeah, so obviously 0-2, we have the salary cap scandal. Uh, the first one, uh, the Canterbury Bulldogs obviously have all their points taken off them. One of the greatest sides we have ever seen. Um, and the 0-2, mate, when I, when I think back to the 0-2 grand final, honestly, 
I almost look at it as an entree to the 04 grand final. Yeah. And that storyline. So they're a trilogy of grand finals, 02, 03, 04. I know it's a trilogy for East, but they, it's a sort of a running narrative where I feel like that era of football yep. culminated in the 04 grand final. And then 05, we went to something else. And that's what I love. It was 02, Canterbury aren't there. The Roosters go and get the job done against the Warriors, who, you know, I, I don't think either of these two teams were better than Canterbury that year. Salary cap, whatever you want yep. to say. You then get to 03 and the Roosters play Canterbury Bulldogs in the prelim final. Was and there and the Roosters, I remember the, the kickoff. Yeah. And Willie Mason, I think it was Steve Price or Willie Mason, and they forced him back 10 yards. And yep. it was almost like, oh, shit. You, I, you could feel it being in the ground. Me being only like 13, 14, it was almost like, oh, we're in trouble here. And it was funny at the end of that game, you know, at the end of the day, that was the Roosters' grand final. They had to put everything into that. Into beat Canterbury. Yeah. yeah. And you talk to players from that. Like I've had many um, Texas Walker on the podcast and you talk to them and they go like, we knew we weren't going to win that grand final because we'd put everything we had in our bodies into beating Canterbury. You could see it. Yep. You could see it. They were sluggish. They were, yeah. And then the next year after that, you get to the 04 grand final, which – I, I've been to many games. It's my favourite game I've ever been to, and I, I always love say, hearing that. Yeah. Fucking well, yeah. Well, mate, as you know, I'm a huge Brad Fittler guy. Freddie's my <coughs> guy. That was Freddie's last ever game, and mate, I remember, I remember still to this day the loudest noise I've ever heard in my entire life was when Canterbury ran out that night. The roar was just unbelievable, it's and when primal. when uh, when Bobcat makes that tackle at the end. There's, there's so many little things from that game that I'll never forget. Like I remember um, there was obviously the tackle by Bobcat. I'll never forget. Like I remember as Hazem El Masri goes to score his try and a little thing that's forgotten is Shannon Hegarty the right? gets there. I was at the game yeah, and I've watched so. it a million times since, yeah. but I still remember live as it was happening, watching El Masri wrestle on top and people say double movement, whatever. Nah. There was a moment there where Shannon Hegarty was there and he, he, he had to either go. get – He slid he off. He started clapping. Yeah. And I just and I remember we're standing there live going, what the fuck is Hegarty doing? And then El Masri comes over the top. Um, an I incredible love, game. I love the the 10 seconds before that with Sherwin going sideways, pulling defenders out of the line, and then the inside ball to Matt El Masri running on, on the angle. Uh, I love Shifty. Yeah. And I don't think Shifty ever got to play at the rep level that he really deserved to just because he played at the time when, you know, you had Andrew Johns, Brett Kamali running the show. I always say with Shifty, and I'll die on this hill, and I'm pretty sure you'll join me on this hill for the first time. It won't be lonely. Short kicking game alone, Shifty has the best short kicking game I've ever seen in rugby league. I'm not against that because I'm a Canterbury supporter. I think John's is it. I th if you put like if they're on the same level, you're going to get fire me up because we've the, the <laughs> kicking the short kicking game now this yep. season has been killed because of the rules. Yeah, it sucks. They're, they're, they've they already tried to kill it with the seven tackle set, and now they've just killed it even more as time's going on. It's, it's a bad product. Yeah, it's a, it's a very poor the fact decision. that you've seen teams surrender on fifth tackle rather than trying to grab an in goal. It uh, sorry again, I, I'll go on a tangent. You yeah. let's, let's move on. Let's talk about O two. <laughs> so um, we've got the warrior and the rooster. The rooster, I'm really happy with. So these these were both influenced by NFL sort of drawings from the eighties as well. But I really like the rooster because of the addition of the headband with Fitler. Freddie, yeah. With Richard Villasanti coming over the top. Villasanti. A bit of a cheap shot, <laughs> but then that was the sort of turning point where that could have been the Warriors on top. We're, we're going to physically intimidate the roosters with half an hour to go. Yeah. But all that did was just the roosters just like, well, fuck you guys. You came after our captain. We're going to demolish you now. Yeah, it was uh, the, the old sleeping giant term. Adrian Morley was reasonably quiet in that game. Once Freddie was hit, you just saw Morley go bang. Click, yeah. Yeah. An incredible moment in grand final history. I also think, mate, the war that Warriors jersey, um, when I think about the greatest grand final tries. Um, Stacey. Stacey, right up there. I, I think Stacey in 02 um, and I think Cody Walker in 21 are two yeah. individual tries that are lost to history except to nerds like us because they didn't win. But, mate, that, that play that Stacey pulls off. The, uh, the ground just lifted, yeah. didn't it? Because there were so many Waz fans in the joint. I think the Mad Butcher just bought a ton of tickets and distributed them to, like, Kiwis living in Bondi. But the joint went through the roof and yeah. it was all of a sudden – because I feel like the Roosters dominated the first half. But then when Stacey sort of stepped through and made that try, 
it was almost like, oh, they can turn this on now. Yeah, they're on here. Yeah. And it just I, – I think he steps past Mick Crocker, maybe Rickardson. Freddie goes for the ankle tap and misses. He runs around. Lukey Phillips, like, some pretty handy footballers yeah. there. Like, it's a cracking try. It is and, unreal. And, it, and it's also – it put it's at a point in the game where it's 6-2 and they go ahead 8-6. Yeah. And it's that changes the game. Second half, there's about half an hour to go and it's almost like – the game is now at a precipice. Mm. We're like, we're on here. Buckle up. It's just sort of a sh- It's a bit similar to 2014 where it just, we were hoping for a classic in the last 20, but then the dominant team shows why they are the dominant team yeah. and blows them out of the water. It's interesting too. Like when I think about the Roosters, like I personally think the Roosters, um, you know, 2000, 2004, I think it's one of the greatest assemblements of a squad. It's badass, ever. isn't it? Um, and you know how, what? How good's the cap? The what? How the, the cat? Yeah. I'll tell you what, The for me, the 0-2 team was good. I reckon the 0-3 team was better than the 0-2 team and I reckon the 0-4 team was better than the 0-3 Absolutely and the great. 0-2 team. Uh, the, un, the 0-4 team, and that's why Canterbury should get so much respect, the 0-4 team Roosters, people will say Parramatta 0-1 and on stats I agree with you, but the Roosters 0-4 team is the best team to never win a premiership in my opinion. The o, the Roosters had a grit that the Parramatta didn't. Yep. Parramatta was silkier. Fantastic attacking force, but they—that was the sort of thing where that, that 04 grand final was so gritty. You couldn't give up a yard, and then Mason with those post contact meters, pretty much bringing the team kicking, kicking, screaming along with him. Sunny Bill with a hit on Flannery. <sighs> it was just such a physical hard game, and it's—it felt at the time. Every time there's a grand final at Homebush at night, it's gonna rain. It was this dewy, wet. Misty rain in the first half. It made it slippery handling errors. It's just a hard fucking game of football. And, but that also characterised the two teams and the character of what they were about. And then it's sort of the next year at 05, it went away. It was like we're attacking and everything touch changed. footy and flick yeah. passes. <clears throat> yeah, everything changed. Yeah. You just had Tim Sheens who just turned the game on its head. And the Cowboys to their credit. Yeah. Like obviously, like that's the other thing people forget that Jonathan Thurston was obviously on the bench for Canterbury in 04, goes up to the Cowboys and just revolutionises the way that they play Absolutely. their footy. No, I shouldn't say revolutionise, but like they, they obviously lost the prelim to the Roosters the week before but in 04. took them to another level. Another level, yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, mate, the thing that I love about this design uh, well, one of the things I've got, I've got a few more things I want to bring up with you, but the league week design, um, just the border on the outside. I love how the rooster and the warrior are sort of they're on top of that design. They look like yeah. they're within it, but they're on top of it. Um, and you know, I, I think I've actually still got this specific rugby league week that you've based this off in this studio somewhere. Um, so it's the 2002 uh big league grand final edition yeah. so based specifically off the colors even the banner at the top where i've got almost your sort of social <laughs> yes. media blurred where it's yeah. analysis predictions opinions and super coach content i think it was like inside win like a nutri grain footy and 500 yeah, bucks or something yeah. but like i've taken that um even like the old telstra premiership logo which yes. i love that was such a good aesthetically looking logo and i've changed changed the telstra logo and it's the your g, g is yeah. in that as well um, the Warrior is sort of taken from a mid, again, NFL, but it's like a mid 90s. There were so many good iterations of Warriors merch in like that 95 to 96 sort of season. Yeah. yeah. And so I've sort of borrowed a couple of different things from there and sort of that's how that's sort of come together, where the Rooster is a little bit much more sort of college American football esque. Talk to me about the Warrior. The boot stands out for me. I think it was Stacey's boots. Yep, Stacey's. Yeah. So I. I was doing a deep cut at the time because I wanted to get the jersey details really right because the V is quite unusual with its mm. shape. It's curved. It's got that red trim around it. It's sort of when the, the brand was in flux moving from Auckland to New Zealand. Yes. Yep. And they were sort of foot in both camps. At the time, I thought it was a really ugly jersey, but I've sort of come to love it now. It's aged nicely. Yeah. It's Now, if they pulled that out as a retro, I'd love it. Um and those boots are just so peak, early 90s. They're garish. It also talks about Nike coming into rugby league during that era and that sort of Nike was the predominant brand where they've sort of walked away from the league. And yep. I always felt like Nike gear and league was all aesthetically just looked the best. The other thing that I always think of this jersey like and, and sort of, you know, pl- playing a part with that Nike sort of vibe to it and stuff, I always think this jersey for me, and I think it's one of the great losses to rugby league of all time, um, Ali Lawatiti. 
left oh, not long yeah. after this. And this is, you know, Ali. Pe- pe- people don't understand how fucking good Lower TT was. He was offloads for days. Oh, yardage. Mate, he was. He was once described as the Michael Jordan of rugby league. I was thinking that too. And honestly, people are going. Well, it's a bit over the top. It was a fucking understatement. He was unbelievable. He obviously went over. I think he played for the Bulls for a number of years over there, Bradford. Yeah. Carved it up up there, but mate, if he would have stayed in rugby league, he would have been one of the greatest back rows we've ever seen. He would have by far and away been one of the most entertaining we've ever seen. Who was the Warriors coach in 02? Uh, Daniel Anderson. We so wish Anderson, Ando all the very did best. Anderson too, go fuck. back in 02 and 01? Or no, was, uh, no, Anderson was coach in 09 for Parramatta. Yeah, he was 09 Brian Brian Parramatta. Was yeah, but was he 09 Parramatta? Yeah. When, when, when was he at Parramatta, Ando? Was he, was he the coach of the 05 side too with Timmy Smith and stuff? No, Brian Smith was. was Brian I remember Smith? that because I was at the 05 prelim. Oh, no, he was 09 Parramatta, yeah. wasn't he? Sorry, yeah. yeah I was yeah, at the 05 right. yeah. prelim and um, we just had free tickets. I think we won it through Telstra. Yeah. And we're sitting in, like in the bowl at the back on, on the corner sort of thing, cheap seats, and they were playing North Queensland Parramatta prelim and Thurston just put it on a clinic. And we loved it because it was just, it was Thurston, it was Paul Rahihi, and it was Travis Norton. It was Dogs of 2002. It's almost like we're, these guys are still beating Para. And there are Para fans where it's almost like, kill Brian Smith. <laughs> like it was, it, was, it was mental disintegration, that football team on the biggest stage. Yeah. And I just sort of loved it. Where I think if a Parramatta fan at the time, you'd sort of die inside. I'll tell you what else I love about having those two next to each other and you'll appreciate this. Like obviously that Panthers side, um, you know, their main guy and their goal kicker, Nathan Cleary, that Warriors side, their goal kicker that night. There's Ivan a Cleary. lot of symmetry there. Yeah. yeah, very cool. Very, very cool. Uh, mate, the O2, I absolutely love that one. Uh, probably not remembered as one of the greatest grand finals of all time, but it was a cracker. Our next one is... Uh, a bit different, eh? Yeah. But, but also... But, we didn't experience it either. Yes, yeah, yeah, but it's it's just it's part of rugby league folklore, and I think that um, you know the 2015 grand final is probably considered to be the greatest grand final of all time. But this one is pure fucking era. rugby yeah. league, man. And I love. I'm going to hand it over to you, but this one it just screams Winfield to me. That's the thing. Yeah. So this was one of the early ones that we did because I wanted to again a love letter to the Winfield Cup branding. It's so romantic. It's so seductive as well with that yeah. word mark. And that's why I've got that right at the bottom, making the big game bigger because that was that was the motto before Simply the Best and it was very, era, it's again, time and place. Like once you see it, it's almost like you know, you're transported to that time. And then these are just really fun sort of mascots. Yeah, We've drawn them sort of based on full ball, which was again that sort of 90s brand where you – any of those sort of really great classic tees that you might see on eBay or Instagram that people are sort of flogging, um, it's that sort of classic brand. And so we just wanted to do something really fun, really aggressive. So the Raider with his pickaxe ready to, to march on. The horns were just really fun to design as yeah. well. Um, there's just a lot of character in that face. And that comes down to Tom's initial drawing too. And then with the Balmain one, we've actually, it's actually the old Balmain sort of logo, but it's reversed the other way. Yes. It's, it's, yeah. not, it's not even the Balmain logo. It's the Balmain League's logo, which is stylized version of the original uh, football club logo. And they're just really romantic, lovely sort of like smash them up, fun sort of logos that you could sh- that would sort, sort of sit well on a T-shirt. And then it's just got this really seductive sort of text where you've got the Winfield Cup text. There's that Rugby League Week style text for the teams. Even down to the really precise, the date, the stadium, where it feels like you're buying this outside the ground on the day. And then I really love the word mark up the top, this Guru 89. And I feel like I should have maybe romanced that a little bit more in some of the others. But we, you see that the year is present in all of them, mm-hmm. where it's Guru, the grand final is present. But I really like that really tall sort of, it's quite a powerful font, font um, yeah. at the time. And then it also sort of sits with that big league sort of cursive where it's had that sort of thick underline at that era. And it's just, it just looks very iconic for the time. Mate, when you first sent me this one, loved it. I just, I, I looked at that and went, fuck, <laughs> this guy gets exactly where my life is at right It's now. also it's got like the Winfield Cup that we've I'm used for your merch as well. about to say to you, mate, the number one thing that stood out to me was it was the first appearance of the Winfield Cup, which we've used on the merch, on the hats here. Have I got that hat on, the red one? Yep. Yes. We've got it here as well. And I just think, you know, as much as you, you know, you've only just redesigned what the, what the trophy looks like, it just, it's just iconic. I just, I love the way that it sits on that one. It's just subtle. 
but it is just so fucking perfect. It's satisfying, isn't it? Oh, mate. It just – and, you know, I, I think that – Nowadays, and like even for that trophy, like I believe this is the grand final after where Laurie Daly drops it off the back of the bus and yeah. breaks it, and like just mm-hmm. now with the sunglasses oh, going bro. down Civic oh, and Canberra, that Canberra Street the Parade. There's so many photos from that that I'm just like, this is '90s rugby league down to a t- I know it's '89, but this is. But yeah, it's the same. Oh, sort of it's so so just nostalgic. Pure. I love too, mate. I don't know how you describe it. You'll be able to describe it to me, but I love how it's almost like. It's almost like designed like a badge. Which one? Oh, the actual the 89. One. Yeah, how it's got like it meets down at the bottom like that. So that's taking the old New South Wales Rugby League logo yeah, and the shape of that and romancing that. So because, again, it's quite curved. It's yeah. the, the meeting in the middle and then just elongating that so it stretches all the way up and then you've got that sort of red into that golden gradient of the, the trophy as well. The other little detail I really like, and this is, this is nerd shit that I think you would like as well so on the old big leagues you would see right on the top where it's almost like official publication of new south wales rugby league uh 1994 volume blah 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 and so what we've got done there it says rugby league guru podcast and then i think it says podcast youtube youtube instagram and twitter maybe i can't remember the exact but it's it's matching the exact same font so again trying to look for real authenticity that it's all in the details those little subtle things. Yeah. yeah. And it's, again, as we've saw, said before, football football people know that. And, you know, like when I look at it, the first three we've analysed, like as I said, we've got the uh, like the eggshell white, we've got the gold uh, around the <laughs> O2 and then uh, that red. Once again, I'm going for another trip to Bunnings and you could take me down there and I could pick out the Winfield red out of a it's, thousand reds. It's sexy. Yeah. Does that make sense? Well, no wonder that cigarette sort of marketing was doing it, <laughs> that Winfield... <laughs> Was sort of running the New South Wales Rugby League sort of marketing operations at the same time. Now, the next one. And this is this is probably, I would say out of all them, probably the most controversial one, which I'm I've heard your explanation of this and I and I get it one hundred percent. My wife, I'll be honest with you, huge South Sydney fan. She almost took offense to this one. And I explained the storyline to her and she just doesn't get it. Wasn't able to get it, you know, just couldn't get it. Now, when I look at the 14, mate, uh you know, I just spoke about iconic backgrounds. That green absolutely hits it out of the park. Again, that's reminiscent of like early sort of 1999, 2000, the start of the NRL branding era when yep. it's almost the, the the combined competition coming back and the, them sorting out what the actual the brand and imagery looks like. And so that's what it's, what it's adopting there with that green. Now, well, what, there's what, an what's, image too, right, yeah. in the back So the of image that. behind it is from the protest marches from 2000 when South were kicked out. Kicked out. <laughs> So that was the sort of whole that idea. That detail is so satisfying. So it's got it's got a halftone pattern, like it's like a newspaper text on that green. And the whole idea there, it's where South have come from. Yeah. The romance of that, but also the sort of tortured existence that South had to go through, that they were the also rans, easy beats, that they went broke, they got kicked out, they had to fight to get back in. And if you know anything about that sort of law. I tell you what, you still don't really know how they are able to get back in, but they just sheer bloody mindedness. Guys like Andrew Denton and Anthony Albanese on the board, mm. uh, George Piggins, making that sort of happen by, again, bringing the rugby league community out. And as I remember as a Canterbury sort of fan, it was almost like we were, Canterbury aligned themselves to South and mm. trying to support them during that their sort of plight where that's why I always sort of feel like a soft spot, soft spot for South because the Canterbury sort of board at that time were sort of like a brother in arm to South and certain extent that, that they helped them get back into the competition. That's why I sort of love that grand final, even though as a dogs person that they lost, it meant a lot because um, my brother-in-law is a South fan. Yeah. And so it was me, my sister and him went to the game. He sat in the barrow. We sat in the kennel. Um, and I, I, that grand final week, just meant a lot to me mm. at the time because everybody wanted South to win mm. and I totally get it but I want my football team to win too and we're, how often grand finals are so rare and even though going for Canterbury at that time we were two years out from the 2012 disappointment but it also meant because we'd lost that grand final this means more this is going to last forever and now it's almost 10 years later sort of you cherish it even further, even though losing that game, just to be there at the big dance means a lot. You're proud of your football team. You're proud of where you're from. I was fun, so proud to be from Canterbury-Bankstown. 
that's who I am as a person. Yeah. And that's my football team at grand final day. But also what South means to so many people across the country, not just in Redfern and Maroubra, but the fact that, that you've got supporters in Liverpool, you've got supporters across regional New South Wales and Queensland across the country and what South means to them. So that week was really special to me. So I apologise to South fans if they don't like the depiction where the whole idea here is they are the pride of the league. They are the song. They are Reggie Rapid. They are the romance. They are the grand old flag, so to speak. Do you know when you said they are the Reggie Rabbit, I got goosebumps on my arm. That's what the, that, because it's – I think I understand where Beck was coming from when mm. she first saw that and said, why is the bulldog the, so intimidating? Because we, we're bad right. and we're going to fuck you up. Yeah, and <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> but – and we that. won. But at the same time when you describe it like that, we won, but Reggie Rabbit's our guy. Yeah. He's our, he's our rabbit. There, there we was, didn't need the big intimidation. We yeah. had Russell Crowe talked about like, nah, a rabbit is a big, bl- our rabbit is a big black rabbit, which is going to, it leaves up, it's got long fangs, it's going to get you. But the, the quintessential image of Souths is Reggie. And yeah. so let's stick to that. Mate, you, m- months ago when you, when you sent this to me, you explained to me, and I remember there was some reference to Bambi. So, and that's what stood out to okay. me. Yeah. So um, FBI Radio, just down the road from here in Redfern. So they used to do a rugby league program by Stephen Ferris um, called Fire Up and it would be on a Friday morning from 9 to 10. And so whenever I wasn't working, mm. just chuck it on. And it was just such fantastic content. I am still think they run as a podcast, but I don't think they're l- no longer on the radio. So FBI, yeah. if you don't know, is a community-run radio station, but very much indie sort of music in Sydney. And that, that's just who I was at the time, listened to that. Um, but they ran... A, a footy show on Friday morning and yes. that week they had Brendan Cowell in. So if, are you familiar with yeah, Brendan yeah, Cowell? Yeah, yeah. So Brendan yeah. Cowell, actor, just loves Cronulla but it, just a rugby league person through mm. and through, a real character of the game and he's done his book called Plum. He's making an ABC TV series by the, based on the book where he plays an ex-pro who played for Cronulla and it's about his life. Um, so he's on the program and he's like, let's go the Bulldogs, let's kill Bambi. <laughs> sort of thing. Like it was like, let's be the bad guys. Embrace it. Everybody wants to see South win. But fuck them. Let's kill Bambi. Let's be the baddest people. Let's shatter dreams. And it sort of felt like a call to arms as a Canterbury person. And it's sort of like Canterbury Bankstown, we love being the bad guy. Yeah. We are the baddest team on turf. Well, that was our sort of identity. And it's almost like, no. We are going to upset everybody, just like how we did in the early 2000s. And that was the sort of idea. The bulldog is big, it's leering, it's coming to get Bambi. It's coming to get Reggie. And so that was grand final week for me, where obviously after the grand final, it's about Burgess, it's about the end of the drought, it's Russell, it's the grand final, it's the reunification of Souths in the sense of we are one and whole. The trauma has been washed away. And we can be proud again. And I remember that grand final because after we lost, we walked around to the borough. I was very upset in tears, not because – just because your football team lost yeah. and you are really yeah. invested in it. And then I walked up there and Sean was there and in tears too. And he's like a, a sort of – he's 10 years older than me and he's a big burly guy and he's, up, he's in tears with his mother and his brother. And I'm in tears and we just embrace and it's – Rugby league. Yeah. Well, it brings people together and what it does does to you. The 2014 grand final for me, mate, in hindsight, it's the start of a really special time in rugby oh, league. 14, 15, 16. Drought breakers. Awesome. All brand new teams, similar to that, similar to 2000s where you would just get, where you had the Knights, then you would have East, then you had Penrith and you had Canterbury and you had a run of different premiers. Into Tigers. Yeah, yeah. exactly. A Tigers as well. And then the Broncos coming back and then Melbourne finally winning one and Manly winning one. And we are now in an era of dynasties and domination of the Roosters, uh, Melbourne and Penrith. Yeah. And I think people long for, we want to see a new winner. While seeing a three-peat is historic, I, th- I think people are longing for, and a dynasty is good in a while, but mm. we've, we're, the last decade has been three dynasties. I think we want sort of an end to that. And I think that's why, again, it's a special time. Yeah. Mate, um, when I look at especially the rabbit there, and I don't know if you meant to do this or not, but I 
I love the the image you've gone for of the bunny there as it's sort of running with the football and whether it's meant to or not or if it has anything to do with it, but it does just take me back to seconds before we see G.I. do the goanna yeah. as he's running away and it just makes me think of that moment because that was big for G.I. as well. That was his moment where he left Melbourne, he stepped away from the big three and that was his moment where he emerged as now like, I'm my own fucking guy here. Do you think I'm, it's the most iconic image of the game since re- reunification? It's right up there. It's if you said it was, Maybe I wouldn't push back. Brisbane and the Cowboys, because of mm. because of how dramatic that game was, with Thurston, with the try, the conversion, the drop goal, even the drop by Ben Hunt. But then is the moment of Souths, you know, the the all Sydney Grand Final of Canterbury and Souths going head to head, the the city sort of came alight, and then Gi sort of stamping his mark on it, a proud Indigenous man, again coming from all the shit that he had to cop in Melbourne about the salary cap, mm. that it, it's sort of special. It killed me inside to see it happen. Yeah. I'm trying to think of a more iconic moment. I'm, I'm struggling now I think about it. I think it I The think drama it of 2015 be. is better. But yeah, as a single yeah. sort of moment in time, it means a lot to people. And mate, I've been to oh, probably 20-odd grand finals and – by far and away, it was the most emotional. Like, I remember being there. I didn't go for either team, but just watching South fans. Obviously, I've grown up in the South in the era. Like, I remember, like, I, I shed tears that night. Yeah. Because it was just, it was just like nothing I'd ever seen before. And then they came back, you know, the the, the next year, obviously saw that unbelievable grand final. That, that one didn't bring tears. The Cronulla one did for me. Yeah. Watching that 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 fan base. We'll get to them soon. Uh, but, mate, yeah. I, I always, whenever I look at that, every day I walk in here, I always think of that moment, GI running away from... Canterbury, but also the history and all the bullshit and all the stuff South Sydney had to go through and that's to get why, to that moment. That's why I wanted to pin it in that sense of history. It's yeah. where they've come from and it's the romanticisation of that footy club as well. And I also think, you know, I, I look at it and I don't know what you're, you know, I always look at the Bulldog being better as almost the Bulldogs is a representation of everything that was bigger that tried to shit on South Sydney yeah. and tried to take everything we, away from we it. We were the last sort of one and that – it's also because I took certain liberties in that because I'm mm. a Canterbury fan and it's like this was the dogs one. Yeah. We, we, we decided not to do the 04 because we wanted the 02. Um, we might end up doing the 04 maybe down the line. But the whole idea is like I wanted my team to look proud and strong and be how I view them, which is, you know, badass. The next one. 1992. Now, I chose one specifically. It's the year of my birth. I was born. Um, is this about- your favourite? Of all of these? Yeah. No, oh, I, I love this one. It's, oh, mate, I find it hard to pick a favourite, to be honest we can, with you. We can circle back right at the end. The, oh, I do love the 92 one. Um, I, and look, I chose this one. I think this was, I think I was born 29th of September. I believe this grand final was the 27th of September, yep. 92. Um, so this one's always special to me. But also, just in rugby league, I think this one's special. Obviously, you know, the last team to go back-to-back before uh, the Roosters did it, 18-19, Tina. Tina Turner. Tina was 93, but it's still that era. It's that era. And I I, I, I always forget, I know you'll know whether it's 92 oh, or 93, okay. but Steve Renoff, yeah. that try, that's for me, that's just an eye. Watching him bounce over the try line is such an iconic moment. One thing that probably you taught me to appreciate more is just jerseys in games and how important they are and – Oh, that Broncos jersey and the Broncos old red St. George v. game last year. I think it's when they wore their vintage shirt. Yeah. And it just looked so great on television. It just looked the best version of how the game can appear. When I looked at this one, when you first sent it to me, the first thing that stood out to me was the <laughs> – and I, I think this is probably to what my brand is, speaks to it perfectly. The way you've gone for the guru and the underline is the, um, I think, the 70s and 80s league week. Yeah. It's definitely referencing that. I think, again, <coughs> it's iconic rugby league IP. Yeah. When we see that, it's, it's hard. Not, you can't think of anything else. Really with that. And it's so fun with the outline, the underline. It's a great font. And I, I think, for example, you look at this font, you think rugby league, and I think there's an AFL font where all the VFL clubs had this generic size font. And I think this is almost our version of that. Font, yeah. Where it's almost like you look at it, it's like, yeah, there's nothing else but right, league week. Um, I really like this one. This was one of the first ones we did without jerseys, where this is just full mascots. Um and initially, there's a bit of cheating in this because this was taken from a St. George Rugby League, I think, 1985 board meeting paper that I found on eBay. 
and it was on a couple of different coasters. And the whole idea, it's like, when did St. George go from saints to dragons, do you think? When did, when did that change occur? I don't know. I couldn't really put my Does finger that make on sense? it. But, yeah. but it sort of, it predates this. But the whole idea, there was so much imagery of St. George on his horse slaying the dragon. But then the whole idea is, let's just take out St. George off the horse. Guess what that horse looks like? A dominant bronco mm. about to like step on the dragon. The dragon's sort of curled up, but it also looks like it's ready to strike, ready to fire breathe. It looks angry. Um, and that sort of imagery where it looks like it could sit on a coaster as well. Yes. And yeah. so I really, I came across that on eBay and it's almost like, that's it. Because I could do something, but I don't think it would be good as that image there. On this one, um, possibly my favourite just little element of any of them is that SFS down the bottom. Knew it. Bro, fuck. I want to put that on a T-shirt. I want to get a tattoo of that. That was on T-shirts. So that, that yeah. if you look oh. on eBay and stuff like that, again, I, I, spend, I spend half my life on Instagram, which I shouldn't, <laughs> and then the other half I spend on eBay. Um, so that is on a number of different T-shirts from the mid-90s where the whole idea is it would have like the New South Wales Rugby League logo and it would have that on it as well. And I've pretty much I've – I've remade that using mm. the, our stylized logo. I've gotten – I've photoshopped the SFS and I've made that ring around it as well. And it just looks sick. And I saw that and I was just almost like, yep, I'm going to pinch that just like how we've pinched the, the 2002 – Premiership logo, I'll take that from uh, full ball and I'm going to put that on there too. The the thing I really like about this is the 92, where it says 92 yeah. New South Wales Rugby League Grand Final. That is taken from uh, 94 uh, footy cards. Yeah. And that font and that stylized, that blue gradient, that straight from footy cards, I think I, I can't. it's not the master series. I think it was just the normal sort of cards for the time. And then, again, it's that repetition of the New South Wales Rugby League sort of logo, similar to the 89, is then being recycled there with the red. And, again, we've got that little word mark, same as the 89 and the 2014, where it's just reoccurring again and again, just reinforcing that sort of that big league, rugby league week, sort of the detail. This is a magazine cover, not a poster. The other detail I love, mate, is that um, Brisbane and St George, just the plain... Black yeah. text. There's cleanness to it yeah, as well. Yeah, proper cleanness to it. And this is this is an artistic side that I just don't have a fucking bone in my body. But looking at your stuff, it's the little things that I noticed that I love. Initially, I had that – there was a little bit more decoration. I had lines running through that. Again, referencing some merch from the early 90s. Mm. And I looked at it and it was matching the, the same merch, but I felt like it's too busy. This one is should be plain, should be stripped back. And it's like the illustration does all the heavy lifting here. Yeah. The background, I get very – it's it's similar to the, the background of the Panthers one, um, but it sort of – this reminds me of when you got it, the the feel and the look of the paper from the old yeah, league weeks. Very That's much the, thinking about that. Almost, almost like I it's coffee stains sort of. Too. Yeah, I love that. And Do it's – when, when, when you actually get to see them next to each other, you can see how different it yeah. is at the same – but how – when you think about it, it looks so similar, but when you see them next to each other, it is so different. It's unreal. Do you see the little New South Wales Rugby League watermark? On the far right, sort of just under it, it's in white. So it's cream is the backdrop, but then the, the New South Wales Rugby League logo is faintly oh. there on the right next to the Bronco head. Okay. It's, it's very subtle, but just little sort of things because that New South Wales Rugby League logo that's in there, it's then same again in the 81 so it's just that sort of solid logo without the red and the, the uh, white blue. Okay. It's just the outline of the logo, which I've then repeated in 81. I love that. It's just little details. Little things, yeah. I love as well. And like I, I'm, I've, you guys can see it on the screen. I'm sitting at quite a distance. But top right corner, once again, the little subtle wording Yeah, up there. Just, yeah, that's unreal. Mate, you mentioned 81. That's our next one. And to me, this is Scanlon's footy cards. Yeah. That's what it screams to me. That sort of the flick going up, absolutely. That's where I borrowed yeah. it from. Yeah, yeah, I thought so. Love it. Um, I really love this one because I'm a Newtown member as well. So dogs, Newtown Jets. Um, and again, like it's sort of sad that like the peak of Newtown's sort of modern existence is a grand final loss. But again, as I was saying before about Canterbury, just making grand finals means so much to so many people just to be part of that. And then it sort of lives forever. And unfortunately for some, 
it lives forever. And but for them, it's the high watermark, and yeah. they'll never get there. Unfortunately, like New South Wales Cup and State Challenge Cup, awesome. Some of the happiest moments of my life has been watching Newtown win those games with Billy Magoulis chip kick at Parramatta Stadium. Just bad start me on Billy Magoulis. My God, oh boy, one of the great afternoons of all time. Yeah, um, one of my mates was in that team. Matty Evans played center. Oh yeah, very good fellow, Matty. Yeah. Um, so I really like that you picked 81 because you went through and you picked a lot of these years. Yeah. And I only had a little bit of say right at the end where I was almost like, oh, rather than Manly Melbourne, how about we do Cronulla so we can get yeah. the Sharks yeah. in there. So this one here, this is sort of based off a mural that was around the, around the corner from Henson Park a couple of years ago. It's now painted over, which is sort of travesty, but it's this big white sort of jet with, with its fist sort of pointing forward and it's that sort of pose where it's not the same, but it's it, we've taken inspiration from that. And then I really like the teeth. It's again jet fighter sort of aesthetic from the the 1940s from World War II. The cone at the top with the the blue and white sort of uh, squares going around that. And then the eel sort of wrapped around it. We were sort of thinking about how can we make an eel and a jet go together, similar to how do we make a shark and a storm work together. It was a bit of a weird one, but we thought. Could it be sort of the eel wrapping it around? It's sort of asphyxiating it. And the eel head is so fun. Yeah. It's so, again, like the, the, the current and the classic logo are absolute emblems of rugby league. Yeah. But that, the stylized cartoony one of 2001 is so fun. So we were borrowing these sort of different images and we played around with, with the big eyes. And this is where Tom's drawing work really comes into it. That face was so well done that I didn't have to do a lot of work. He'd done it on paper and I was almost like, cool, I know exactly what to do. I don't need to make too many adjustments here. So those are the sort of fun things where all the stuff we do is we do by committee. We almost make a mood board for each single one. Yeah. And so we talk about it extensively, make some notes, find stuff on Instagram, send it to each other screenshots. And we've just got a document where it's almost like this is the vibe. And similar to what you've asked me is like, what's the, I'll give you a vibe and then Tom will draw it and then say, cool, I can take that and I can run with that. I might make ch changes. I could fix something up or I might change it dramatically, but the, it doesn't happen without his initial drawing right at the start sort of thing. Mate, you are, I'll be completely honest, you actually completely threw me when you were talking there. And I haven't told you this at all. And this 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 actually goes close to making this one my favourite. My great uncle actually played for Newtown. Oh, wow. And he was in World War Two. As oh, well, wow. so you mentioned that, and his his nickname was uh, he when, when when he was over in the war. I can't remember the name. I'll have to talk to mum and get the exact name. But he was uh, when he was over at World War Two. They used to have nights where they'd get some of the soldiers to have like boxing matches. Anyway, there was one guy who who was dominating for weeks, months on end, and uh, my uncle got in and fought him one night and actually knocked him out. And that guy came back once the war was over, and he became a world champion. And his thing was that he never got knocked out. And my, oh. my uncle knocked him out over there. And so off the back of that. Not league play though. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Off the back of that though, they, they used to, his, his name was Bill Wilkinson. They used to call him Gunner Wilkinson. And uh, yeah, and he played for Newtown when he came back as well. And I just, that's why that one, like obviously Newtown not part of the competition anymore. And that makes it special. But because my great uncle played and just the face on the, on the jet, jet to me. Looks like someone that'd knock a world champion out oh. and then just get on with it. But you know? it's also like represents what the Jets are now. Yeah. Where we are a battler, we're still living and we're still thriving. Like I go to the Jets and that me and Tom are both members of the Jets. We love the football club, what they represent, especially as an inner city sort of thing where Newtown is, might not be necessarily a rugby league sort of mecca, but it sort of has become the work that that football club has done. It's changed hearts and minds of people in that area where it's almost like may have previously turned their nose up at rugby league and then yeah. they've come to Henson Park and they've realised what a great experience, what a great place and what a great football club. Yeah, it's unreal. I love, mate, I already mentioned it, but like obviously the Scanlon's footy card that <laughs> I'm just like a broken record, but like I could pick that blue oh, out yeah. of a million and know that's the footy card's blue. Um, well, that was also the thinking with the 81 and the 89. Yeah. That they, they sort of twin together because of the decade, but the whole idea that 89 is the Winfield Cup and then the 81 is the New South Wales Rugby League sort of logo. Those were the sort of... Um, inspiration for those two that they're, they're a pair for sure. one thing that i find unique with this one and i look at all the other ones and the ones that say rugby league guru it's all very straight 
you've got the rugby league on the angle here, a bit more of a, I guess, a playful sort yeah, of take definitely. on it. And that was based on the big league work mark, yeah. work mark from the same program around that time. So, yeah, it, it, again, it looks dated. It should look from a different era where everything else is a bit more sort of stringent or sort of templated or generic. This one is, again, of a different time. And, mate, the little subtle detail that I fucking loved – and I, I've actually – I look at it all the time when I'm in the studio. I sit here and it faces me, the little G in the corner with the red around it. Yeah. Mm. I really like it. I, I think it – I always look at it and think, fuck, there's something something in that. Yeah. So that was initially like the dollar fifty. Yeah. On the program. And so I just thought same as everything else, different ways where to find your branding and your identity and placing that within that and sort of, again, it's a marriage of those sort of things. So that's the whole idea there. The other thing I really like about this is it's Parramatta versus Newtown. Yeah. And again, this is going to sound a real bugbear, but I sort of really dislike the homogenization where people refer to teams as Panthers or Tigers or Eels. It's Parramatta, West and Penrith. <laughs> the, yeah. the whole idea that football clubs are no longer rooted in geography, that they are just brands to be bandied around. I, that... Again, that this might be a very small sort of – it's not have broad appeal. But it's something I really care about because football clubs represent people and suburbs and places mm. and they do have an identity. And if you drop the geog geography from that identity, I sort of feel like what are you about? What do you represent? And I sort of feel like that's what's happened with a lot of TV broadcast where it is Broncos versus Rabbitohs. And it's almost like, okay, and then kids sort of grow up and I know because I've been a school teacher and I've taught in sort of footy schools and it's our kids say, oh, like Rabbitohs or Tigers or Storm. And it's almost like the, the, uh, you, once you lose the geography, I think they lose the, – the team names lose meaning a little bit. I don't know. That, that's very specific to me. Yeah, and you know what? No, I actually agree with you and I think that's a great segue to our next one now. The last three that we've got, we actually don't have them up on the wall yet. I've got to get them printed, uh, which we're going to do over the next week or so. But the next one, mate, you talk about geography being so important um, when it comes to the Manly Seagulls and the Newcastle Knights. Absolutely. 97. Places that are defined from where they are and the people from those places. Yeah. Fucking oath. And Newcastle, this one, what a place. Mate, this one is unreal. I absolutely. I think it's the best one. I, don't, I, I think <sighs> Penrith one is important because it starts everything. But this one, I think it's the best one. And I think when I finished it, I was almost like, yeah, I'm pretty happy here. Bro, this one's almost like there's so many things in it that I love that it's almost annoying I think it was also trying the hardest to cover one to do too. There's the, 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 the little logo in the corner stood out to me straight away, the, the 97 Cup. Optus Cup. Yeah. Fuck. Stop the fight. But it was also – it was such a juxtaposition of branding where I was on Super League side of the wall because of the dogs and stuff. And I believed in the vision. We're going to China, mate. Um, <laughs> and the juxtaposition where between the ARL, the Optus Cup is very traditional. Yeah. That deeper sort of green and the green and red. I didn't like the trophy at the time. I don't think either of those 97 trophies are very good. But um, there's something really interesting about that sort of branding of the Optus Cup in 97 where the, the ARL marketing of that time was all about harking back to the tradition of the game. Stuff that I was just talking about, which is weird, where I was on the other side of the fence where it's almost like, nah, uh, dogs, Wigan, Wednesday night, <laughs> World Club Challenge, let's go. Jason Robinson. <laughs> the, the other fucking, you fucking shook me. Um, the other thing that I love I think about I'm the this only one. defender of the World Club Challenge <laughs> left. Yeah, yeah. We'll save that for another day. Yeah. They'll save that for another day. Maybe we'll do a poster. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd be keen. Uh, I think we should take it to Vegas next year if anyone's watching and listening, but we'll see how that plays sure. out. Um, mate, I love in this image, and I assume this is what you're saying with this, it's Spud and Chief. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, actually, I think it's Harrigan and uh, Hopawade. That actually, was, that's what the image is. That was the initial. Yeah. But Spud and Chief also had run-ins in 96 and 97 as yeah. well. Iconic. Yeah, absolutely. And then trying to recreate that where other sort of things where, again, I'm trying to, with the two teams, trying to communicate where these teams are. Yeah. And there's angst, there's tension. They just don't like each other. And it means a lot. So... I really like that they're ready to kick on while others are running towards each other or one is sort of fending. Here it is. 
it's full on confrontational. Yeah. The two teams. Uh, mate, the two jerseys that the mascots have gone in here, uh, a couple of things stand out for me with that Manly jersey, that blue collar. Sick, isn't it? Pep- Iconic, yeah. The Pepsi, Pepsi alignment Manly, of the branding. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's because I've talked about tradition and place, but now I'm a, I'm a sucker for a good branding and advertising. And again, the Pepsi and Manly looked fantastic. And it's also having just a big brand rather than sort of like, I don't know, smash repairs or gutters and stuff like that or waste disposal. It's just almost like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. I like that. I'll buy that. And it's one of those things that like I – like had I never seen the Manly Seagulls before and you said to me, hey, you know what would look really good with sort of maroon and white, Pepsi blue, I'd go, mm, I don't know, would it? Like A little bit of red, a little bit. It's just perfect. Yeah. It's fucking perfection. And again, time and place. Yeah. It is it, – it is – Immediately, that is the 90s, and that's the look. And I love, too, this Newcastle jersey, the verticals. Yeah. Do you think that's the best Newcastle jersey? Um, yeah. yeah I, love the, I love that they've gone back to the 2001 V. I think that's a fantastic yeah. jersey that they've got. They finally nailed it. I think, I think Newcastle have had a couple of cracking jerseys, but this one, and maybe it's because of the grand final, I don't know. I don't know if that's what makes me more biased towards this one, uh, but I, I love this jersey. Yeah. This was this was Stocklands. Yes. Yeah. And you know what's really great about it was the shorts, where it was the the it was the the checkerboard Checker, sort of pattern. Yes. Yeah, yeah, between yeah, yeah. gloss and a mat, and it just looks sick. Yes. And but I very sort of Syria R sort of a cat might sort of appreciate <laughs> that reference for the time. Very good. And mate, I remember when you sent me this. It actually the original one that you sent me didn't have a background. You said we, I'm you trying had to settle to and fro between what's this going to look like? What are we going to do? Yeah. And for me, I you know I, I sort of said, oh mate, I'd love like an SFS sort of background yeah. to represent this. And and I remember we went back and forth, and and you just said to me, I've got it. I know what I'm doing. Yeah. And you came back with this, and straight away, I don't know what your process was for it, but I I just think back to these times that the amount of those giant flags in the yeah. crowd. That were these chess, as you just said before, like chessboard checkers sort of. Um, especially so, the Newcastle one, that's so iconically to me. Newcastle. Yeah, and that's something fantastic about the visual imagery of that football club. It's so entrenched in that place. It's sort of sad that not not more football clubs have those huge sort of banners and flags. The, I was going through um because we're posting sort of old sort of stuff, photos that people just haven't seen before. Yeah. So I've been going through the New South Wales State Library and National Archives and National Library. You just type in rugby league and you just sort of get amazed by some of the imagery that comes back. Seeing these amazing, huge Canberra flags from 1990, it's almost like, these are awesome. And there was a couple of Newcastle stuff come up. The flags are great. And again, it's iconically Newcastle. I'll tell you what, for images that like you haven't seen before or whatever, um, and I'm not sure where they're getting them from, but the RLPA oh has been God, posting so some recently. Oh, so jealous wherever they're getting photos oh, from. I, I knew you'd appreciate yeah. it and be aware of it. I think uh, some of them have been even – I met Clint Newton over in America and <laughs> I said to him, I go, mate, what about the images in the art? He had no fucking idea what I was talking about. I thought, <laughs> God damn it, well, Clint, Whoever's help me. running their social <laughs> media is doing a fantastic job. Like where those photos are coming from, no idea, but they're absolute gems. They're all time. Um, mate – Probably the image of all these, and then we'll, we'll move on to the next one here. And this one is just so different to the rest of them for me. But this grand final was so different to every other grand final, the 2005 West Tigers. Yeah. This image with the big tiger in the background um, and it's got the cowboy at the front. I, I, it's such a, this is such a unique little design with just the plain orange background for such a unique grand final. And as we mentioned before, such a unique time in rugby league. Yeah. Talk to me about this one. We wanted – so this initially started from – we were talking about how can we do the tiger and how mm. can we do it differently from everything else where we've got these sort of figures in confrontation and different sizes and it's like we've already done the tiger. We've already done Balmain. So we need yeah. to do something really distinctly different. And it's almost like – so that's Balmain. This is West Tigers. They're different identities, especially for that time. So how can we do this? And so we sort of came across this imagery from the Chicago Bears during, I think, the the 60s. Okay. And it was this giant bear's head. And inside the bear's head, I think it was like a 49er. And I think it was the 49er trying to pick at the one of the bear's tooths. And it's almost like that's sort of a great sort of imagery where you could have a footy player inside the mouth of a bear or a tiger or something like that. And so we took that and played around with the imagery. And then thinking about the tiger – 
that 05 team is really Larry. The jersey is Larry. Yeah. The style of football sort of break broke from convention where football where the forwards are like, we're gonna spread it early on first and second and try to play around you rather than the style was as sorry to get Abe Simpson on you, sort of that the style of the time was to go through the middle, yep. right? And so it's breaking from that. So the classic example, the 04 grand final. Yeah, exactly. Yep. And so we wanted something Larry. So we looked at I was looking up sort of tiger tattoos from Asia and sort of landed on a couple of different sort of mood boards and sort of built this design out of it where, again, it's it's Larry, it's in your face, it's aggressive. And then the whole idea with the cowboy, it's JT sort of yeah. under the pump, can he deliver? Um, it's very much post where really these two teams were equals going into it. Nobody sort of thought that these teams would be the grand final. It was so strange. It, was, yeah. it's, it broke convention really. Well, oh, I still stand by, in my opinion, the two best teams that year were Parramatta and St. George. Oh, St. George should have won that. Call. Yeah, that was the that that was the missing ring for the Dragons there, and both these teams knocked them over in the prelims to absolute, absolute crackers. Shocks as well. Yeah, yeah. I think it was Cowboy. Was that the, they dr- they drummed them like thirty nil or something. Didn't they? was that that uh, game? That, that's what I was ta- talking about earlier with yeah. North Queensland towed them up. Yeah, and that two thousand five prelim is such an like again one of the great nights of the football stadium as we've been talking about where West just ran the show. Yeah, I think it was. I think it was my birthday and it was a party and it was in the garage and it was on in the background and stuff like that. There was a couple of beers sort of floating around and it's, it's, I just sort of remember being in the garage watching it and sort of like I was Benji doing a flip pass from the scrum or maybe that was – I may be confusing that with a round 26 game, No, no, no. Benji scored the first try right. off a scrum. Yeah, down the left side. Yeah. And it was almost like the Tigers are up here. St. George are going to sort of shit the bed. Yeah, again. Again. Yeah. Were, did, did you rate that team? The Dragons. Yeah. Did I rate them? Yeah. Yeah, I mate, I, I think when you look back at, you know, teams that <laughs> it's a travesty they didn't win a grand final. Cooper, I mean, like oh, obviously like Cooper and Gaz went went on to win a grand final later, but that team of um, you know, Sean Timmons, Lance Thompson, Jason Ford Riles, pack. Ford Pack was unreal. Yep. It was um Yeah, I, I rated them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I thought I think they got overpicked in origin. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. But it they actually, were still a formidable football team. Yeah, I think uh, as well that that Parramatta side we talk about, I talk about him all the fucking time. Tim Smith, that was a Timmy yeah. Smith season, and uh, I remember talking to Tim Smith, and I, I asked him about that Cowboys game, and he goes, "Mate, me and Eric Growth all year, we never missed a beat the entire year, whether it was a training, in game, whatever. And That's if you go true. back and watch that game, there's an early moment in that game where he goes for a cutout or a chip kick, and their timing's way off." And Tim Smith said that in that moment, he just went, oh, We're fucked this here. isn't the day. Yeah, This isn't for us. And he looked over and Matty Bowen and JT were fucking on it. high yeah. and bouncing on their toes and he just went, fuck. And Tim Smith said, I'd never had a low point in my career yet. That was my first year. Yeah. Everything had been 40 tries. You're the it's best kid ever. It's yeah. happening early. Yeah. 100%. And he just said that was the first time it actually hit me that the NRL's hard, hard. <laughs> which is crazy. I love that though when rookies just hit it and they just don't know. And yeah. then the whole idea is that they think, oh, I think Sonny Bill or I think, no, it was Jonathan Thurston in 04. And it's almost like, oh, grand finals are just going to come. And then they don't. And yeah. it's almost like, footy's is hard. Well, you, the, the, like it is the toughest rugby competition in the world. I, th- I don't think we sort of emphasize that enough. Yeah, I, I often say, you know, I, I talk about this quite often on the podcast that because people like us, we grow up at the game, you, you just. When I went to America, it was really interesting seeing Americans watch the game for the first time yeah. and, like, we just don't appreciate how fucking brutal it is because yeah. we're just so used to it. Yeah. Yeah, because you're, you're a football, a soccer fan yeah. as well. We talked about this before. So SFS is obviously relevant to you, not oh, just FC, for fo- absolutely. footy but also for Sydney FC. And I was actually saying to my parents the other night when we were watching the second leg of the Socceroos versus Lebanon game, I said since, you know, being so immersed in rugby league and now I've got kind of friends in the game and you kind of see how big these dudes are in real life and I've grown up with soccer players mm. It is unbelievable the size of these guys but also the pressure that they put their bodies under physically and I think you can almost take it for granted when you're not around it as much. But then seeing them side by side, it is actually unbelievable and and also knowing – the pressure that they're putting their bodies under, it's insane. Absolutely. Well, you talk about the pressure they're putting their bodies under, you don't have to look any further than the injury list this week. 
it's I like, think it's also the speed of the game. Yeah. Where yeah. I think the guys may be fitter, um, maybe not necessarily stronger, but they're, they're fitter, more aerobic. Definitely not weaker though. Not weaker. Yeah. But the thing is it's the speed of the game mm. and what's happened with the six tackle rule. Uh, no, so the, sorry, the six again rule yeah. has fundamentally changed the well, game. That's what we, we, we had a question during the week. Do you remember we were talking about this with the Patreon where someone, yeah, also someone I think said. The have struggled. Yeah, yeah, fair. So someone said on the page on the other day, geez, I hate when we have a scrum and we all stop and stand around for 30 seconds. I'm like, mate, the, I, I, teams need it. Need it. Yeah. It's, You're gassed. What they're, they're doing is just fucking, It's not PlayStation. Yeah. These are yeah. real guys. These are human beings. Yeah. I said to a friend the other night when we were watching Roosters Rabbitohs game, which I haven't spoken much about and I won't spoke, That's speak fine. much about. <laughs> but totally I, understand. We'll see yeah. how the tomorrow goes. I said to her, pick a front rower and just watch them. And they just go and and count how many tackles they do. Like just just watch instead because I'm 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 such a tap in merchant in the in in my own sport. You know, yeah. like I'm a striker, so I'm always watching the players where the action happens real quick for them. So your wingers and whatnot. That's what I'm watching. But when you take the time to watch what's happening in in the defensive side of the game, you realize the pressure that these guys are under. And I think yeah. I took that for granted until I started really taking it in and going. They're backing up tackle after oh, tackle. Oh. Like you look like you, we talked about Paddy Carrigan this yeah. this morning. Like that's a player who just is relentless and it's how can – I think one of those and I'm concussed and I'm out for 12 months. Yeah. They're doing, you know, however many tackles a game. And I reckon a great example of what Kat's pointing out there, if you want the experience, just go and watch a game that Cam McInnes plays yeah. and then watch <laughs> no one fucking talk about him ever. <laughs> yeah. Like and then he'll do it for 27 weeks on the trot. You got to have a guy who makes tackles. Yep. Tony Grimaldi, two thousand and four. <laughs> um, David Stagg, just tackle <laughs> machines. Yeah. Dale yeah. Finucane, Dustin John, uh, Dustin Johnson, is that right? Dallas Johnson. Dallas Johnson, one of the greats. Right? Yeah. So I feel I should like flail myself for getting that name. <laughs> um, it's forgivable, don't worry. But think about like you need guys like that in a football team for a character perspective, and guys who are just going to do the hard work. We can't all be a big back rower who can make a couple of tackles, but is, their job is to be the threat yeah. and to beat a guy on the outside. It's amazing. You've got to have a guy who also is willing to take 40 tackles. Like Josh Jackson, a really unheralded player at Canterbury Bankstown, but just did a lot of the – just the Dirty work, work. The work that nobody yeah. else wants to do. Yeah. Yeah. And when you don't have someone that can do it, Oh, it's so it obvious. It stands out. Yeah. You yeah. become a touch yeah. footy team and you become exposed. Yeah. It's the literally the definition of putting your body on the line and I don't think you see sports where there is that level of physical sacrifice. No. They're, they're, you're so protected in other sports. You are not protect, protected in the NRL. And that's also why, not to carry on, but I love Ola Kawatu because he mm. does all of that but then at the same time he does like the his work. lateral movements and his ability to like break – Break yeah. off a tackle and go for a try. It's unbelievable. When you look at the size of the guy, it's like how can you carry your body like David that? David Fafita running yeah. 100 metres in like 11 seconds. It's almost what is going on. Like that's you mentioned before, it's not a PlayStation game. Some of those guys make it feel like it is. <laughs> that was the thing I felt on uh, Belmore because we were up in the back, back of the Grand Centre. I went, I went down the front to buy a beer and just walking past it. It's almost like, geez, this is fast. Yeah, it's just you don't realize it until you're down the front. It's like the speed that and the contact that these guys are making. It's faster than it's ever been. And you also like you don't realize just how big these human beings are. Like I was, you know, we, we I, I was sitting in um Bloke and Bar Studios a few weeks ago, and Kempi had um an interview coming up. The guy I was interviewing walked in. It was Appy, <laughs> and I'm standing next to Appy going, "This motherfucker's a foot taller than me." I always look at him and go, you're small. so small, man. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I'm sitting next to him going, oh, my God. He's built like a brick shit house. Yeah. As well, um, Jackson Hastings has come down for a number of interviews and stuff and just standing next to Jacko, like you, you, you watch him on TV and, you, you know, I thought it was wild when the Tigers were playing at, at 13. But then I stand next to him and I go, I see why they're playing yeah. you at 13 because mm. you're built like a brick shit, shit house. Yeah. You all are. I always it's thought Josh – I thought Josh had O'Carb was like on the smaller side, you know, just – leaner, mm. faster, you meet him, he's in a unit. It's yeah. just that he's standing next to guys that yeah. are just as big as him. I yeah. sort of find that I sort of find it hilarious when you then you might be flicking around in Fox League and you might see like I think I, we saw this a couple of years ago where we were at the pub pre origin and they had like a ninety three origin. And it's like Fittler and Stewart are playing. And they're sort of going sideways and just the bodies are smaller. And it looks a little bit more rugby where they're looking for mm. they're tracking sideways and they're looking for an inside man to run and defenses are backing off. And we're looking at it, it's like, fuck, this is slow. 
and it looks like a completely different sport and how it, and that's sort of what rugby league has done mm-hmm. we the sport evolves in iterations yeah and that's where i i quite often think that you know people nowadays look at the ball players we've got and go they're just not the same as they used to be and i go you know what maybe they're not but you don't understand the different pace they're having to think the of pressure that compared they're under to as these well. guys. We like, talk about like maybe the quality of halfback, and we've talked about this today. Yeah, and what 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 Canterbury sort of needed, where it's almost like it's a different sort of game and different pressures, yeah. different expectations as well. Yeah. And that's what, like I, I hear people when they talk about young halves. Yeah, oh, if Joey was playing in this game, he'd, I'm like, you know what? I'm sure Joey would still dominate, but Joey would have never ever experienced the pace that the game is played yeah. at. Like. The, the worst game of first grade you can find right now for me is still heaps faster than what Origin was in the early 2000s. Yeah, it's completely different. It's, it's, a, you, you, it's, so, it's so dramatic until you see it. Yeah. And it's almost like, oh, this is slow. This is why. Yeah, like when you – and that's what I love sometimes when you get on Fox, how they have the the classic games or whatever, and I love when you get a game from the 80s and then the next one's like a 2017 or something, like, just whoa. watching it. And that's before six again yeah. too. Mm-hmm. And you see, you just go, my God, the contrast is unbelievable. Now, mate, the last one, last one we'll touch on, um, and I've still got to get this one up on the wall as well. I can't wait to get it. Uh, we mentioned 14 was the start of um, – some drought breaking grand finals and that period obviously South Sydney Cowboys finished with the Cronulla Sharks and um the Jaws theme that you've got yeah for this I thought it was just so fun yeah um with Cronulla and leaning into that there was a couple of different ways we could have gone with this but I felt like this was the most fun so I've done that quite detailed it's very different to the illustration style here but we just sort of felt like that worked it lent into sort of the big red word mark which we could hero it but also how does a storm and a shark sort of engage? And we could have just done two mascots running against each other, but we've done that. We've got that in 02 and 89. And that was one of the later ones we did. It's like, how can we have sort of have fun with this? And the, the, the shark sort of leering up, pushing up out of the water and the storm, the, sto- the stormy, I suppose. How, what are we going to call <laughs> them really? Um, sort of just sitting above the water, just yeah. ready to strike like the old pros. Um, and I almost wanted to... There's no face on the storm, on on the, the guy or whatever. We, we've done a couple of different iterations where he might be, look like Thor or a Greek god. Yeah. But the whole idea here is we actually want him to make him a little bit more soulless, a little bit more scary or a little bit le- conformity, like, like a Star Wars storm trip to a certain yeah. point where it's almost like these guys are just a machine. They just roll. And it's almost like the Melbourne Storm Factory taking sort of guys who are okay and turning them into – like absolute jet first graders and absolute battle hardened guys. Like me and my uncle used to joke that like the Melbourne storm must run a systematic doping program because how they turn guys around. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's a Craig Bellamy football, football factory. Mm. And that was sort of the ideas that we were trying to um, sort of illustrate there with the storm where these guys are, they're sort of faceless in a way. It's because they, they're sort of unheralded. A lot of those guys, especially in the forward pack, some of them like Dale Finucane. Mm. You know it's almost I mean? like they're so clinical yeah. that, you, you know, you could say that the personality, it's not about the personality. It's Absolutely. about conforming to a certain style and, and approach and, and the Craig Bellamy clinic that you're talking about. Absolutely. It's like, it sucks the personality out of it, but that's what makes them so good. Exactly. that They are mentality monsters. Mm. They are so professional. Mm. And so that's what we're trying to communicate there, but also trying to play into... The, there isn't a lot of I, Melbourne Storm iconography. Mm. It's pretty much the original branding and then they've had a rebrand recently, but there's not a lot. There's a couple of Herald Sun sort of grand final posters. So we, we didn't have much to go off. So we'd draw, we were doing that very much from scratch. So I like this whole idea of this storm rolling across, across the seafront, the jaws ready to jump out, but the storm is just waiting there. So... Where again, that's more talking about rather than the eventual grand final victor, it's the matchup between the two. And again, those are two, there's no love lost between those two teams at the time. And mate, that, that's the thing that stands out for me when I look at the shark there. Like for me, the sharkies showed the rest of the league how to deal with Melbourne. And I think for too long, teams showed the Melbourne Storm too much respect. Yep. The Cronulla Sharks just went, oh, fuck you. Yeah. I don't give a fuck who you are. I, the, the moment that stands out for me, and it's not from the grand final, but I remember it was, I think it was earlier this season when Mick Ennis, like, he rubbed Cameron Smith's head. Love it. And everyone blew up. And I, and I just sat there and went, what, Cam Smith isn't fair game? If Cam Smith Absolutely. puts on jersey and socks and goes down to that field, he's fair game. 
And if Mick Ennis can get the best out of him, so be it. Well, Mick Ennis sort of had that sort of running battle when Buddy he was the dogs back yeah. in 2014 in that uh, elimination final in week one. You, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yep. Um, yeah, the niggle, the, the Sharks weren't necessarily the most, the best team to look at. But fuck, they were tough. Yeah. And you had to respect that. And they, they brought a niggle and they brought a fight to it. And they weren't afraid for, of a confrontation. And again, that's sort of for feeder, you know? Yeah. And like, and that was the whole, like, they were the bad guys. And like, you know. And again, Jaws is the bad guy. 100%. Jaws yeah. is the villain. And Fafita represented that. Like, for me, you know, congratulations to Luke Lewis winning the Clive. Fafita was the best player on that oh, field that no night. No doubt. If he, wouldn't, <laughs> if he wouldn't have carried on like a complete and utter pelican the entire season, he shits in to winning a, a Clive Churchill that night. And in, I, in, a, in a lot of ways, it doesn't matter because Luke Lewis is the sort of forgotten footnote yes for feeder is the moment yeah for sure and i just i love i look at the, this picture man i just look at the teeth and i just think fuck that was canal that it's, was it, bite down on your mouth guard it's also two go. teams where who were probably wasn't a rom, like it wasn't romantic for cronulla but it probably didn't have the the appeal where previously the cows and the broncos they were sort of yeah, Broncos are a little bit of evil empire, but everybody could lo- love the cows. Where mm. these two teams weren't necessarily lovable, but they were hard. I had a I had a Sharks fan uh, that, that I'm mates with that I caught up with a few weeks ago, and I was telling him about these, and I actually showed him this, and I thought it was really interesting his take on it. He said the reason why he loves it is because it looks like the Sharks are on the way up, and their whole thing is up, up Cronulla. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, love, love that. It. I love two mate, and it's very simple, but just the stripes. On the angle, a little side. bit of fun, and again, yeah. talking about the sort of team colors, bringing that in because I felt like I'd done the design, and I feel like it's not grounded enough in these team identities. Just find, finding another way, and again, that sort of where they're out on an arrow is borrowed from like I think late eighties footy cards, mm. where it's got that template where it's got it's up, then across and down, and well, no, sorry, across, down, and across again. Yeah, but it's running with the team color banner sort of running and I sort of took that and think about how I can play around with that. Mate, I love too that, you know, when I look at all these, as I said, they're all just so unique and different. This is the only one that's just all black. Yeah. And you know what? When I first saw it, I was sort of like, I sort of went, oh, you know. I felt like you were lukewarm at all. Oh, I was lukewarm at the start. The more the more I've looked at it though, the more it's grown on me because like that, the, the, the black, like the, you, you sort of said there, the Melbourne Storm were like, you know, Stormtrooper, sort of how they went about the things. But Cronulla always, like, they just, they almost seemed like the Death Star to me back then. Yeah. They were just the fucking assholes. Mongrels. Yes, mongrels. But th- that's sort of what was great about them. Yeah, there was exactly. A, there, it was old school. It was old school. And then you just had that little sprinkle of your James Maloney, your young Jack Bird, your young Val Holmes just mixed in. And, you know, even like the outside backs like um, Latelli, Fecky, like it's not appreciated how fucking tough those guys were. Even Barber from the scrum base for the first try. Like, you know, you look back to that grand final and Barber scores that first try and I've heard Chad Townsend talk about it. He wasn't even told about the play. Yeah. He was shoved out of the way. Just th- that level of coaching and that level of – and you see Chad, he gets pushed to the ground, he looks up and he's just straight in celebration mode. It's not, hey, I'm the halfback. Why the fuck did I get shoved yeah. out of the way? It's just beautiful. Let's go. I and love I think it. that's – the t- that team earned respect from the football public. Yeah. Where initially it's like, oh, Cronulla, what's the go there? Because they were so bad during the late 2000s and, uh, sorry, late 2000s and early 2010s, they were an absolute basket case of a joint. Yeah. And they slowly sort of get better and it was almost like, are these guys the real deal? And they had to earn the respect of the football public. And because of that old-fashioned, hard-nosed style of football, I think the romantics like me and you were almost like, I sort of get what Shane Flanagan's doing here. It's not flashy. It's not probably the team that you want to watch on a Friday night, but it, you can't help but respect it. The moment that stands out to me from that grand final, mate, is that image of the last play where Melbourne Storm make the break and there's a moment there where the camera zooms out. Not not a huge zoom in the whole field, but it's about a 20-metre square spot and all 13 Cronulla players are in the shot. Yeah. And it's on the it's on the right hand. Oh, sorry, it's on the on the when you're looking at the TV, it's on the left hand side of the uprights. They go two passes, and Cam Smith swings it to the right, and that's where they make that tackle. And you just think, in the 79th minute, how can all 13 players be on one side of the post yeah. and they still make that tackle over in the corner? And I tell you, mate, 
On top of that, I think one of the greatest moments in rugby league that is underappreciated, they make that tackle and Mick Ennis, he doesn't run to teammates to celebrate. He runs to the two ball boys and hugs them. Have you ever noticed that? No. Go and watch it. They make the tackle. Mick Ennis raises his hands and runs over the sideline and hugs the two ball boys. Were you boys. at the game? I was at the game, yeah. yeah. Right. I didn't I didn't notice that live, but when I watched back the last five minutes, it's just, yeah, it's, it's a really special moment. It's cool. And like Latelli's just on the floor, just made that tackle. And But yeah, go, go and watch Mick Ennis. He runs straight to the ball boys and hugs both of them. It's a really... It's a really cool moment and probably a moment that people from what they know of Mick Ennis wouldn't expect. Oh, no, but I totally get Mick. Yeah. He's all in as a clubman. Yep. He understands is. what it means. Yeah. As a and he's been club. to a number of clubs. Like I think people forget with the career of Mick Ennis. Like, he was the hooker for the Broncos in 06. He gets injured yeah. and Wayne shifts Sean Bergen in there and he wins a Clive. Was in that hot St. George team we were talking about as he well. He was too. Yeah, he was the nine. Played yeah. with Johns at Newcastle too. Fuck, yeah. Crazy career, Mick Ennis. Uh, but, yeah. I'm glad I've actually been able to show you something that maybe you weren't aware of. Go and watch it. You'll, you'll love it. Well, that, that was sort of during – I wasn't going to grand finals during that during that era because, again, dogs were sort of on the periphery, weren't that great at that time. Making eight but weren't dominating. But uh, we were doing house parties. So we so 2015, yeah. we had just moved into our uh, flat in Zetland, had a bunch of people over, and it was just like the – Greatest nights because all your mates are there. Everybody's having a great time. And the 2015 grand final has just gone exploded. It's great. Everybody's on the balcony drinking beers. It's awesome. And people just can't believe it. And then the 2016, we flipped it. We went to our mate's place in Petersham. And again, big barbecue. And it was we sort of came down to a f- getting real niche now. Uh, we had a big footy tipping comp. And it was between my part- partner, who's now my wife, Sam, and between Tom, my collaborator with uh, The Messenger. So Tom, again, rugby league journalist, journalist at the time, and Sam was almost like, I'm in it because you're my boyfriend and I'll, I'll do it. And Sam won it on the day because she she picked the st- um, Cronulla, he picked the Storm and was almost like the person who didn't know anything about footy tipping, won the whole comp of about 30 people. And it was just Always almost, the lie. And the, actually my memory... My favourite memory of the night is the photo of her where it's almost like it's after grand final. She's got a sausage sizzle in her hand and just a thumbs up and a beer in the background. It's almost <laughs> like you guys don't know anything about footy and it doesn't matter. How good? How good? It honestly might be the most consistent thing in human history that the person that seemingly has the least idea in footy tipping. I was so Wednesday. proud that my girlfriend sort of won. It was so great. <laughs> it's unreal, yeah. And it's it happens all the time. I remember like when, when, when I was a teacher and, you know, I'd be the only male out of 30 going to these footy tipping comps. And it'd be the lady working in the office who's never watched a game of rugby league that'd just be sitting there laughing at me every week and I'd just be like, I'd laugh along. <laughs> on the inside, I'm dying though. Dying. I was I'm like, like how can't I do this? <laughs> I spent eight hours on the weekend watching this fucking thing. You <laughs> didn't even turn on the TV. This shits me to no end. Unbelievable. Oh, well, I'm sure I'm sure she doesn't have her own rugby league studio now. There we go. <laughs> we'll take it. Mate, um, this has been... I, I, honestly, probably the most enjoyable hour and a half I've had in this studio so far. This has been. I'm really pleased to hear that. This the has been peak great. of fucking rugby league for me, and I know there will be so many guru fans that will absolutely love this sort of chat. Make sure you go and follow the Instagram page at the Messenger RL. Yep. Correct. Make sure you go and follow. Um, mate, unreal stuff, and we've got some plans for more stuff we're going to put into the studio and some other things throughout the year, which we'll touch base with you guys as we move forward. But. Uh, Mate, I am. I feel very lucky to have you on board, part of the Guru universe to some extent, uh, and I think uh, yeah, the future is very bright. Mate. No, I really appreciated the opportunity to come in da- today and just shit talk for an hour and a half. It's the best thing to do. I've got a feeling it probably won't be your last time in here. Hopefully not. There we go. <laughs> no, <laughs> Thank you guys. You, mate. you guys felt like I was third wheeling. It was um really special. Okay, no, you mate. Don't worry about it. <laughs> You're gonna learn a lot. Kat, you're going to learn a lot from me, but I reckon he's going to teach you. Oh, no. No, let's talk about Sydney FC. (laughs) (laughs) All Western Sydney Wanderers. Now, we are on the verge of a long weekend here, so I'm going to let you hit the road. I know you've got life responsibilities to get to as well. Congratulations. No, no worries. Um, I'm not getting to as much football as as I would previously because of my son, but – He's wonderful and we're going to go to Henson Park on Saturday. I'm going to take, to, take him to his first football game. He won't watch any of it, but that's fine. It's, it's, it's just a pleasure to be able to go to football. Sounds like a moment. baptism of sorts. 
Yeah, well, it's it's gentle. It's gentle. <laughs> New South Wales Cup is the right place to introduce them. Ground up. Love that. Guys, make sure you go and follow the Messenger on Instagram. Follow all their gear. You'll see more and more of it across Rugby League Guru merchandise and in the studio and everything over the next couple of weeks, months, years, I'm hoping. Unreal stuff. Thanks for joining us once again on the Rugby League Guru Podcast.